Hello everyone and welcome to another review. Today we're gonna check out the Mechanike G5 Pro. This is a fully mechanical controller with Hall Effect sticks and triggers. Their USB cable is pretty standard, not a premium cable, but not bad either. It also has a 2.4 GHz dongle, which is pretty good. The G5 Pro comes in two colors, black and white. This is the white one. And I have to say, what a good looking controller. This is one of the best looking controllers I've seen so far. The paint job looks fantastic and all of the small details makes this controller look amazing. The triggers are Hall Effect triggers. And the face buttons are Mecha tactile buttons. These buttons combine a rubber membrane and a clicky switch underneath. The buttons are very soft and have a good travel distance. When fully pressed, they won't sink flat with a shell, which is a good point. The analog stick is removable and it has a metallic ring for protection against friction. The D-pad has a pivot in the center, and it's fully mechanical too. The function buttons are also mechanical. And the shutter buttons are also responsive and very easy to press at any point. On the back, you have a mode switch for different platforms and charging connectors. For some reason, there is no charging dock for this controller yet. On the back buttons, they are a bit weird. The position is just fine. They sit right below your middle finger. But they're a bit hard to press if you press them in this angle. I can't even get them to click at all. They're much easier to press if you press them at this angle. And finally, at this perpendicular angle, they're perfectly normal. This is not entirely bad, as this prevents accidental presses when you're gripping the controller too hard. But when you do want to press the buttons, you must make sure you press them at the correct angle. They're not hard to press, but you do have to spend some time with the controller to get used to them.
The front plate of the controller is removable and it's held by magnets. And if you remove the analog stick, you will see the KC overhaul effect module right away. Now, the best feature of this controller is probably this. Just look at this RGB effects. This controller really puts on a light show. And if you feel that the lights are too strong for you, you can just decrease the brightness. There is also other light effects. If you notice here, this LED is not turning off. It's because this effect is glitched in the brightest setting. If you decrease the brightness by one level, it will display it correctly. And these LEDs in the middle will display the battery level. Also, you can customize the solid colors to reflect which profile you're using. Now let's jump straight to the computer and perform all of the default tasks. The analog sticks has no dead zones in the axis. And the center dead zone is pretty small too. On the circularity test, it has less than 1% of error. The D-pad is very good, 
and the diagonals are very easy to hit. And when pressing it on the center, it won't activate all directions, even when you press it really hard. The Hall Effect triggers are also very precise. And you can record macros to the back buttons too. Additionally, if you want to just remap a button, you can do it too. You have turbo for all of the face buttons. And there is a toggle turbo functionality. With the button combination, you can only register turbo for the face buttons. You won't be able to register turbos for the triggers and shoulder buttons. To do that, you'll have to use the PC app. You can also adjust the vibration intensity. And the LEDs will show what level you have selected. You can activate simulated gyro for the right stick. Or use the left stick to control the mouse. Now let's perform a polling rate test. And we have pretty good results here too, with 800 Hz of polling rate. Now we're gonna check out the Mechanic software. I'm gonna be leaving the links for the software and the driver update in the description of this video. The software is entirely in Chinese, and initially it won't recognize the controller. But pay attention to the firmware version here. When you change the language to English, it recognizes the controller. But you still can change your settings. So you must restart the software and now it will recognize the controller. Here you can see all the four different profiles and you can cycle between them by pressing function and home. Here you can test all of the buttons as well as the vibration of the controller. You can also calibrate the motion sensors and the analog sticks. The mappings tab is also super complete. You can remap any button you want. Additionally, you can remap to any button on the keyboard, any mouse button, and multimedia functions. On the joysticks tab, 
there's a couple of interesting settings. When testing the analog sticks, there was no dead zones, but if you do like them, you can enable those. It's a very subtle and tiny dead zone. You can customize the curves for the sticks. And disable the central dead zone entirely. Also, if you want the full range of the outer dead zone, you can enable it. There's a few games that takes advantage from the square dead zones. You can also customize the range of the sticks. And here you can apply the curve adjustment on the go by pressing a button. On the triggers, you have almost the same settings, but here you have the trigger macro function. Basically, it lets you use the triggers as a macro button. And the macro will only get triggered when you press the button all the way down, just like a GameCube controller. But notice that with the button combination, you can only record macros. You cannot use it as a remap function. The back buttons though can be registered as a macro or a remap button.
This threshold lighter will determine when the macro is triggered, in case you want to activate it earlier. And you have the same curve settings for the triggers too. In the lighting tab, you can customize the RGB lights. Sometimes the selected color will be white, and that happens because the brightness is at the max. You should lower it to 50. You can customize the rumble motors independently. And here you can customize turbo for other buttons that you couldn't activate with a button combination. You can also adjust the turbo speed. On the macros tab, you can record macros and fine-tune them with much more precision. And only on this tab, you can remap a button to the trigger macros. And on the motion sensing tab, you have even more options for the simulated gyro. And here's how to update the controller through the app. With the controller plugged in, press and hold X, Y and Home at the same time.
After updating, unplug and replug the controller. In case the analogs or triggers aren't working properly, here's how you can calibrate them. This controller can be connected to multiple platforms at the same time. And the mouse function works on the smartphone too. So you can leave it paired to two devices and just flip the switch whenever you want to play on another platform. But notice that the button layout is inverted on the switch. To fix that, you must hold function and A for a few seconds. The simulated gyro and the mouse function won't work on the switch. Aside from that, all of the other functions work just right. Time for the teardown. This controller is super easy to disassemble. You just gotta remove all of the hexagonal screws on each side. Then carefully unclip the back shell. And here you can see why the back buttons only work when pressed at an angle. There is also a rubber protection for the switches. For the battery, we have a 600 mA battery, 100 mA more than what's in the package. And you can see the charge connectors, the switches for the back buttons, and the Hall Effect triggers. And here's the other side of the board. The pivot of the triggers are made of metal, which ensures a long durability. And here's the membranes for the mecha tactile buttons.
The face buttons have kale switches. And here's another look at the D-pad switches. The button layout is fixed and you cannot change it. An additional step that I like to do is applying keyboard lube to the triggers. Keyboard lube is made for plastic parts and will ensure a smooth movement from the triggers. On my final thoughts, the Mechanic G5 Pro is a solid controller. I personally like the D-pad and face buttons. They're softer than the buttons on other controllers and much easier to press. Also, this is one of the best looking controllers I've seen. The paint job and RGB lights are just amazing. On the cons, the software is not as polished as I'd like to see. There's a few bugs here and there, but overall it does the job. Also, there's a few functionalities that I haven't seen on other softwares, like the macro on the triggers and the full control of the dead zone and range of the analog sticks. And that's it for this video. If you like my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't lose the future videos. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.